And then he pursued that a little further and he uh, said, well, if it's not really a parasympathetic nerve operating the viscera, what is it doing? And from there, he discovered that, in fact, it's part of a complex that is um, doing a, a very clearly definable task in a very clearly definable way. And so polyvagal theory, for me, opens the door to a new view of the autonomic nervous system in which it is no longer dualistic as a seesaw and reciprocal, but rather triune. That there are three parts of the autonomic, not just two. And that third part, previously not articulated, deserves our very close attention for the reasons that we'll discover. Now, um, with the discovery of a third branch, um, we immediately stumble into the question of, is it truly autonomic? Is it right to say that this newly uh, defined complex of five cranial nerves is operating as a unit for a particular task that is autonomic in nature? And so our proposal is yes. The, this group meets the criteria for inclusion as autonomic because it mainly happens uh, non-cognitively. It's mainly involuntary. If we have certain stimuli, these uh, phenomena will naturally arise, whether no matter our training, no matter our age, our culture, our religion, our gender, it doesn't matter. It's built in, hardwired in the system, and it has specific survival value. And those are the criteria for defining autonomy. Is it mainly non-cognitive? Not entirely, but is it mainly non-cognitive? And does it help the system keep running in the background? for survival? And the answer is definitely yes. So Porges took his idea and he pursued it and he did studies. Uh, his first population, which we see in this slide, um, was an autism study, which um, uh, autism as a condition is not well understood, but it does have the characteristic of being in the territory of this proposed third branch of autonomic, which we'll be discussing. And he found confirmation of his theory rather dramatically in the improvement that was uh, found with that population. And we see on this chart that hyperactivity, affect expression, emotional control, uh, a 12-point scale of measurable uh, affect was uh, improved. That, in my view, quite strongly confirms his hypothesis. And we'll uh, pursue that a little further as we go along. So Porges was developing the notion that the autonomic nervous system could be viewed through, through the lens of phylogeny. And I appreciate that's a term that you may not be familiar with. Phylogeny refers to the appearance of attributes through a succession of life forms, from rather simple to rather complex. So, for example, all creatures have some way of handling oxygen, and as they become more complex, we find things like lungs. All things, all creatures have some form of digestion, ingesting uh, food and uh, expelling waste. And so as life forms become more sophisticated through the course of evolution, the phylogeny is a study of the progression of these attributes. So Porges looked in great detail at the uh, phylogeny of heart regulation. And he discovered that very primitive vertebrates 
and then progressing up to more and more complex vertebrates seem to add additional layers with each stage, additional layers of heart regulation capacity. So the very earliest creatures have a uh, tissue called chromatin tissue, which we see defined here on the slide. And that has the effect of releasing noradrenic amines directly into the blood in the heart, which makes the heart go up. It makes it active. So we have a plus sign in the column for chromatin tissue, and we see that it, <clears throat> it persists through all subsequent life forms. And we have the beginning of a theme <clears throat> that new attributes are added on top of old ones. The old ones are not removed. The new ones modify the older ones incrementally. And so and then we could see that in a somewhat later group of vertebrates, there is an additional feature, an autonomic nerve regulation of this essential function, heart regulation. You don't get any more essential than that. And the, this is called the DMX, or the dorsal motor nucleus of cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve. And we find that in very primitive creatures, this first appears and then it persists all the way into mammals, including ourselves. And that's our vagus nerve. It's one branch of it, not that fourth branch that's non-conforming. It's the rest of it. And this is what it's doing. It has a negative effect, sedating. All nerves generally operate in either excitory or inhibitory. You know, either one pill makes you larger, one pill makes you small. <laughs> it creates a range of motion of excitation or inhibition. And the effect is we gradually have an upper limit if I get very excited and a lower limit if I'm sleeping in my bed. So a range of motion is start, starts to appear with a plus, very simple, just in the tissue, and a minus. And then we find a little bit later in the bony fish, something else is added, the so-called sympathetic nervous system, and we find that again, it is a plus. It is further excitory. So now we have the first up and then a down that created a range of motion. Now we have another up that takes us higher. And in that, we increase our survival capacity because we're more adaptable to a wider range of situations. And then we see a little further, you skip one step with the amphibians, but as we get into reptiles and then mammals, the adrenal glands producing catecholamines appear. And again, that's further up, so adrenaline. Now we have a range of motion that started up and then down, and now it goes way up. And we are, uh, our survival capacity increases again because we now have a higher spike. And then his great discovery was that in mammals and primates, including ourselves, there is an additional feature been added in the grand design of things, additional and that has an in inhibitory effect. That is, it can soothe us. So now we have the complete picture of our modern condition. We can go up and down, and then we can go way up, and then we can come way down. And in that is the full range of motion that we experience. 